nature of the force and nature of the reason. And without that, you know, if, without that, the cutting hand makes no sense. The up makes no sense. Mass bad makes no sense. Hesitate tag makes no sense. What's up, man? Dude, I forgot your name, but I remember you. What's up? Will. Will. Dude, what's your last name? Tennis. So we all know that sails do not generate, sail, uh, sailboats are not pushed upwind. The mystery of how sailboats actually manage to direct themselves counter airflow is explained with airflows. And roughly speaking, I'm just going to run through this because I would do it with the Socratic method to try to generate that dynamic engine environment as I talked about earlier. If you've got a group of air molecules, the airflow is going to pass. The air character is eventually going to split. There are only two places where this group of air molecules can go. Okay, past the windward or can pass the windward. Because this thing is curved, there are different asso uh, distances associated with each. And the lower side of the sail, the outside sail is longer. The inside one is shorter. If the two group of molecules travel at the same speed, which they do not, but if they did, by the time the windward air molecules, let's call these our leaders here of this group, got to the end, these guys would be somewhere in here. What would be left between this and the air behind would be a vacuum. We know nature does not like vacuums. Nature abhors a vacuum. But just to say, when you walked in this door today, you did not fear that all the air molecules were going to be coalesced in one corner of the room, leaving you to suffocate, dying like a fish. Right? Rather, air molecules distribute themselves evenly in, this, in the space that they occupy by virtue of intermolecular forces. And those intermolecular forces are the things which cause air, the air molecules to accelerate over the sail to fill the gap. Their acceleration takes place where the sail is most curved, which in almost all sails is very strong. Why? Because at the actual area of curvature is where the difference di differential is where the distance differential is taking place. So we have acceleration happening over the curve here. Notice on most fast sails, the leech tends to be straight. It allows for deceleration of the accelerated airflow. Because ultimately, by the time these two groups of air molecules exit the sail and reunite back here, with no physical separation, they have to be traveling at the same speed because they have to be at the same pressure. So two fluids be under a different pressures when they're occupying yeah, when they're in the same space, bounded by the same proverbial universal container? No. That's, that's something that people don't readily realize. The sail not only the sales curve not only accelerates airflow, but it also has to slow down before it gets off. Does everybody under, uh, do we understand that? We're gonna come back and talk about this at length. This is something that I had not considered in great detail until you know a couple of years ago, but it changed the way I think about it. Leeches. All right. So I, I know you're all thinking in your head, Fred. What the what the hell does this have to do with anything? Like, like, why are we wasting our time? On the inside area, we have a region of comparatively slower molecules, or uh, they're, they're moving at a relatively slower speed than the region on the outside. And by virtue of something of Bernoulli's principle. That's going to be associated with different pressures. The way I think about it is that this group of air molecules, when they start accelerating, the space between each individual one lengthens, and that's that's how you get the little pressure read. In fact, I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. 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 Here we got the high pressure region. Notice that the low pressure region, like the major low pressure region, arises where the air accelerates most. And the low pressure region is going to exert a suction perpendicular to the surface on the sail. The high pressure exerts a force in the same direction. And let's say that I'm going to draw the same. This is the major, this is the force that propels the boat forward. People ask, how does the low, how does the low pressure region suck, you know, propel the boat forward? How does this simple difference of pressure 
pull the boat forward. Well, ask yourself, how is fluid sucked up into your mouth through a straw? Your mouth created a region of low pressure, and the fluid rose to fill it. Sailboat created a region of low pressure, and it moved forward to fill it. And it continues to create that region of low pressure, and the sailboat continues to get sucked forward to fill the space. The more forces at work here, obviously, but we'll get back to this later. Take a look at this force, it's kind of diagonal, right? It's not straight forward, it's not straight to the side, but it has components. It can be resolved into components, to use the mathematical language. The force component that's 90 degrees to the center line, that is helium moment. And as we know, it's expressed over the vertical leverage of the sail, so this is kind of an incomplete representation of helium moment. The forward component is drive. Masking the such as forward. So this is the mechanism by which sails work. And inside of this framework and this logic, we can start to understand camber, draft position, sail interaction, angle of exit, getting back to the concepts we briefly discussed. All we have to do with what's happening in terms of pressure forces, air molecule speed, all that crap. That's what we're manipulating. Does everybody have a, like, a real solid fundamental understanding of what's going on here? I try to use some like common sense analogies to paint it out, and I'm running through this at a mile a minute. I understand that. But because this, the subject of this talk is supposed to be tuning, we got kind of got to go faster. This is like the first talk I did last week. So in order to generate lift, we need two things. Or well, we need the fastest possible airspeed to be attached to both sides as, as much of both sides of sails as we possibly can, right? All right, let's just take let's just consider the, let's call this a laser or something. We have a nice little object here that's bluntly breaking air in the front. Mass. Is there a wonder why laser telltales aren't right here? Yeah. Fell a separation bubble. Because we don't have airflow attaching in the wake of the mass. Eventually it attaches, and generally speaking, telltales are mounted where the airflow attaches. We're just behind a little bit. We want it to be a little bit. So people kind of have a comment. They kind of understand how like buffing install works. But what buffing install is really about are these separation rules. If you start to head too high into the wind, this lure separation bubble vanishes. Now you have direct, you have direct collisions. The mass is no longer in the way of the air. Windward separation bubble expands dramatically. Surrounds the sail with a region of neutral pressure in that area. And the collisions, the direct head, head, front collisions, they're no longer supported by high pressure on this side, start to invert the sail. I say that works. It's also why telltales are so sensitive. Because as soon as the separation bubble starts to expand back, we've got this region of disorganized neutral pressure in which there's some vorticity, there's some spinning. Tilt tail starts to go crazy. The really cool thing about this is when we're luffing, or when we're, when we're kind of hanging up too high, we can still get attachment on a part of the sail. Right? There's still airflow coming down here and it can still attach, roughly speaking. And everybody is probably getting lost in my crazy illustration. Sorry. So, why are. This might be a dumb question, but why are telltales so far back from the jib? Is it more of a visibility thing? Or? Jib creates its own separation bubbles, too. Yeah, but it's it that big? Because they're like all the way to the back. You have, you have more reliable, or, or there are reasons to put them that far back so they're not disturbing every every second. For the, the closer you get to the loft, the more likely you are to start to have more momentary disturbance. But knife edge separation, yeah, it creates some, it creates separation bubbles at some minuscule level. On a properly on a properly trimmed jib, I'm sure that you could probably make them go away at some point. What's up? Would they be like farther back on an etching and then on a 420 so that like when you pinch you could still like 
Like you didn't head up a little farther and you extend the separation bubble. You're going somewhere, we're going, but I w the only way that that would be different is if the mass was cutting the air in some different way and we know the mass was the same, right? Oh, I'm mean on the jib. On the jib? Right? It's the same, it's the same right. nice edge separation, right? All this has to do, all of this has to do with the angle of the luff and the mass relative to the air. Generally speaking, we sail at a pretty a pretty high angle of incidence as far as air flows go. Right? Airplanes sail at like three degrees, we sail at like thirty degrees deep. Can we manage that? What's up? Three they, their air flows are aligned at like a three degree angle. Oh, if give that versus the flow of air from an open, right? Our our sails are aligned here, pushing through here at like 20 something degrees, 30 something degrees to the airflow that's, that's, that's coming over, generally speaking. Glider wings are like one degree, something like that. Super fit. But we're kind of getting far afield. Here we can have partial expansion. We have longitudinal expansion of, of the separation bubble as the level gets worse. So if we only head up a little bit, this uh, the separation bubble here may go to this here first before it goes to here, before it goes to here, and then I'll ultimately the sailing first. Right? We all see that. We all understand that. We've all seen it anecdotally. We've seen it in practice like every day. The leeward side, let's take a look at the, at the opposite situation on the leeward side. Right? Let's say that we don't have this problem. Let's say that this is kind of like our, our magic angle here. Let's say we've got this problem. Now we have direct airflow collisions, and they wipe out the windward separation bubble. But look what happens on the leeward side. We don't have sequential, we don't have a gradual process <coughs> of separation bubble expansion. As soon as we start to lose flow here, we lose flow almost over the entire thing. Which is why stall sucks. It's why, it's why all is why from Octi sailing on, all your all, all the coaches say, you know, better to be under trim than over trim. Because as soon as you stall out, this region with airflow, which created low pressure, you've now surrounded it in this ostensibly huge separation bubble. It's not really a separation bubble anymore, but it's just this region of neutral pressure. And I didn't say this to begin with, and I should have. The sail gets about three quarters of its of its total force from that low pressure region, not the high pressure. You get a lot more, you got a lot more oomph out of the suction than you do out of the push. So stall is a devastating process. So that's angle of entry and that's separation bubbles. Do you understand what the angle of entry is dependent on? I kind of like, I, this is not inside the definition of the physics terms, but the way I think about it inside my own head is that, let me see if I can move on this up right. Here's kind of like the center line of the boat. Here's the sail. Here's the boom. This would be T degrees. It's all good. This would be C degrees. This would be A degrees. Your trim angle plus your camber angle better be roughly parallel, roughly equal to your angle of incidence. So, so your angle of attack depends not only on how on where your sails are trimmed, but how deep the sail is, right? The deeper the sail is, the more that, that angle here, let's put it this way, let's hit draw really flat sail. You see how that angle is way far forward? Let's draw a really full sail. See how that angle starts to come a little bit further back? Angle of entry depends on camber, in addition to trim. It also, it also depends on draft position. Let's take a look at two sails with equivalent depth. Here's a guy whose deepest point is at like 50%. Here's a guy whose deepest point is at like 30%. You guys see how this angle of entry is kind of pointing a little bit further back? That's why Gary Jobson says if you want to point below your country. 
because we have to get to that magic kind of near parallel angle to make these things as small as possible. Have to. Because the regions of neutral pressure, they ain't high and they ain't low, so they ain't helping. That's kind of, so that's kind of that's angle of entry. We all kind of grasp on this? Am I am I like flying at 10 billion miles per hour and am I losing people? I'm getting some worried looks from the crowd, which generally tells me, Fred, you're either speaking Greek or you're going way too fast. You can do a little calculation here to accommodate draft position, but I'm not that good of an artist. And besides that, I don't even know how to do it, so I'm not pretending that I use it. So we're talking about minimizing separation bubbles to work. You always want to point up when you want to be able to point up when you want to be able to go up when fast. We'll get there. Okay. But that's not where we go. We're going like, that's like five steps down the road. Okay? I'll get there real, real quick, right? Let's take a look at these two different shapes, or these two different shapes, okay? Where's this guy's low, low pressure region? I'm going to answer your question right now, okay? It's, it's the, the first one, we'll go sail one, sail two. Sail one, where's his low pressure region? Kind of most curved par parts of the sails, a little bit further back, so his low pressure region is going to be a little bit more further back. And at that point in the curve, parallel to the suction force, whatever, it's pointing generally sideways, not forwards, right? How about, how about this guy who's curved way up? All of the acceleration is taking place on this curved surface, so his low pressure region is here. Who's going forward faster, so or so too? Because more of his total force is devoted to forward suction rather than sideways. That's why that Cunningham is kind of cool. But again, if this is not trafficking in contest we haven't already discussed. It all comes back to pressure and suction. And air molecule acceleration. Yeah. Using the Cunningham actually lets that center part go further forward. We'll get to that. That's that's where we're going here. I don't want you to think about that yet as much if you don't understand like what the controls do. That's a much more basic conversation to have. But uh, no, 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 it's fine. Because believe me, I didn't know at, at all at, at, at one point. I mean, I needed somebody to explain to me. There's no doubt about that. But just think about the shapes. All I want you to do is think about the shapes right now, right? Because when, when you're taking a look at your sail, what I want you guys to see is shapes. Not, oh, I need X amount of Cunningham, oh, I need, I need Y amount of alcohol, whatever. It's going to change boat to boat, but the shape's not. Because the shape's what creates the force. So if we understand the broad concepts, we don't need to have a measured dial on our outfall. We don't, we don't have it anyway. It's collegiate sailing. Like, I would love in club sailing, where I bring my equipment with me, I love to have everything mapped out in diagrams so I know exactly you know, five on the Cunningham, you know, four on the alcohol, whatever, but we don't have that. So we gotta, we gotta be more fluid with the concepts, right? All right. So we kind of handled draft position there with regard to, with regard to direction of suction. We've seen how draft position can kind of change direction of suction. So we've done this to answer Sam's question. We talked about angle of entry. We talked about separation bubbles. We want to minimize the size of separation bubbles by getting that right angle of entry, by, by getting that luff oriented the right way to the wind. Not only in the bottom part of the sail, but through the whole sail, right? At the bottom, at the middle, at the top. If I'm sailing in four knots of wind with a, with a strap main sheet just cranked in, and like here's my boom, Here's the middle portion of the sail. Here's the top batten. Bottom portion of my sail might be cool. Its separation bubbles might be minimized. But I guarantee you, at that top batten, I've got a massive stall on the Why? Because the airflow does not approach the sail from all angles at all heights, from, from the same angle at all heights. We talked about this before, laminar versus turbulent flow. <laughs> In laminar flow, 
which is to say five knots and lower, we have neatly segregated areas of flow speed, which my ransom guys are talking about this all the time. Because the true wind is stronger higher up, let's just take the upwind example, the wind, the apparent wind, comes from further aft higher up the sail. So you have to twist the sail open to maintain that parallel angle of attack. Everybody thinks about twist as if it's some kind of like leech tension back half of the sail issue. Nah, dude. It's, it's, it's a good portion that has a lot to do with the front half of the sail. How can you tell when you're too twisted open? You're not looking at, you're not looking at the, the leech, you're looking at the luffing that's happening at the luff of the top of the sail. Mass separation bones. So we've got to line up our angle of attack at all heights on the sail. So if the breeze is coming from this angle down here, this might be cool to minimize our separation bumps. But if it's coming from here, up top, maybe I need to go up like that. It's coming from uh, right in the middle. If it's coming from here, up top, maybe I need to go up like this. And that's a twist over the sail. Knowing when you need to do that is a big deal. And I'll have to go back to laminar versus turbulent surface boundary layer. You guys didn't see that, I think I put it in the shadow. Yeah, actually, I think you can probably see it, I doubt you can probably read it. Yeah, give it a bad name. Yeah? When you're going down though, doesn't the separation bubble get When you're going when you're heading down, yeah. don't you use the sail to maintain the parallel angle? What about on the dead run then? Huh? On the dead run. Should you ever on a dead run? You shouldn't. On a dead run, if you point 180 degrees to to the to the breeze in the depth shape, yeah, you'll lose leeward side flow. But that's why in collegiate boats, the fastest angle, and I'm serious about this, from from as soon as you get from from uh flying the jib out with the crew flying out to the lure side. As soon as you get to winging, the fastest angle on BMG is, is as high as you can go with the thing winged out and the and the, the jib leash returning. If you have to go so high that you have to open that thing way up, you're probably sacrificing BMG. Okay? You're probably going. Uh, you want to see the cup shape. Oh, not opened up. You, you want to see it like blown way open. I can go real high if I, if I just blow the thing way open. If I can keep that cup shape, I want to go as high as I can. Why? Because it keeps fluid airflow over the, over the back of the sail. And that generates suction, which pulls us forward faster. And that in and of itself is a game changer. You'll see guys going slow down here. And this, this takes a long leg for it to, pick, for it to play out in, in collegiate, please. But like the guys that go down here, and are just sailing on pure and simple drag, their airflow looks like this. They've got no blue side attachment versus the guys that go up here, just a little bit higher. And now they've got airflow cutting both sides of the sail. Get sucking. This, this, this. I saw that a lot. It's magical. <laughs> The difference between here and here is like a couple degrees. Like, goddamn, just make a difference. Huge difference. And now that you guys know about the forces, you know exactly how big a difference that is. Because people, people think, oh yeah, just a little bit, a little bit higher, and it makes big. No, get flow over the lower side, and now you understand the uh, the mechanism, of the the engine of that force. Now you've got low pressure. Now it's not just high pressure drag pushing you down the force. So this is high pressure here, but without the attachment of the flow on the other side, you don't have the low pressure suction. And as soon as you go a little bit up here, not only do we have the high pressure, we got the low pressure, we're going forward faster. So that's kind of another diversion. Camber. Let's do camber. Does everybody understand what I mean when I say camber? <coughs> camber is how cold sail is, how much curve there is, how deep it is. So we'll draw a full sail here. We'll draw a flat sail here. 
Now remember what generated this region of low, of, of low air pressure, right? What generated it was the difference in distance between the two sides of the sail. It's the difference on the leeward and the distance across the leeward side versus the distance across the, the windward side going to be bigger or smaller for a more curved sail? Bigger. Bigger. We got more distance differential, therefore we have more acceleration. Can you say that one more time? On a more curved sail, we're going to have a bigger dip in distance differential. The air flow on the leeward side is going to have to travel much further. Distance differential will shape what? Airflow, airflow passing on either side of the sail. On a much deeper sail, oh, okay. the guys going okay. to lure, they're going to have to travel a lot further. And because they have to travel a lot further, they're going to have to travel a lot faster to maintain our neutral pressure relationship here coming over the end. So this guy is going to generate a huge force coming out here, provided that you can keep the separation bubble minimized. If, if you try to go up wind with a huge sail, what happens? Your angle of attack goes here, your air flows right here, big windward separation bubble, and you're not going fast anywhere. So a deeper sail, a lift maximizing sail for, for design wind and lower will be generally speaking pretty full while maintaining, while minimizing that windward separation. So when we're separating bubble gets bigger, you got off. The flatter guy, less distance differential, less acceleration on the rear side, less force. Sometimes good. We'll talk about that. Can you draw the little position of the Yeah. I mean, assume the draft position is equivalent. I've done a very this let me see if I can do the job. I'm not good at all the things you That's not even terrible. I'm just talking about that. Yeah, it's four. That's five. So this is the deepest part of both sails, uh, apparently. Like I hope I use the curve that way, but it should be just conceptually, just assume it is. This is the deeper guy. This is the deeper. Camber is a ratio of depth to cord length. This is going to become really important later on for understanding what the controls do. Cord length is the length of the sail. So yeah, the, the, the x-axis of the sail. Exactly. In this, in, think about this one, right? We've got, if this is the sail looking from the side, we've got a cord here, we've got a cord here, we've got a cord here. It's kind of all parallel. Yeah. How long that is is going to very much control camber. We'll show you, I'll show you how this gets longer and shorter later on. You gotta ask yourself, you know, how, how does the bang, how, how does the bang flatten out the mainsail? When we put on a whole bunch of bang and mast bends, middle bows out, and the cord got longer. That's a, that's just up there. But we'll talk about it later. Again, we're going far afield from where I wanted to. And we're not doing basic stuff. Alright, let's go back to our sail here. And I've marked all this crap 